Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Thank you for watching. I am here at a supercharger in Texas. I don't even know the name of the supercharger I'm at. I hope you guys can hear me okay. I found a spot where I think the wind is reduced a little bit, so it should be okay for live streaming and talking to y'all. You can see the Tesla supercharger behind me. This is a 150 kilowatt charger. We're at a La Quinta Inn. And now I got the sun on my face, but life is what it is. So, um, it's somewhere in Texas. I think we're uh, we're on the way to Houston, Texas. Uh, north. I think it, it's. I don't think it's the Victoria Supercharger. I forget honestly. But we're we're on our way to Houston from Starbase. So having fun. Uh, had a great time. I wanted to think about. I, I was thinking about some highlights of of what I'm taking away from. from somebody asked me the last live stream or the time, live stream before whether I am more bullish or less bullish on a scale of one to ten about tesla stock which um, i would say and i would say more about the company than the stock and i am i'm i, I think i said 37 and i should have said 69 or 42. um very very bullish not so much you know elon's presentation um i'm, I'm not worried about q1 earnings i'm looking long term i'm always a long-term guy i'm looking you know five ten years down the road i'm not looking at, at um I'm not looking short term like that. I, I just, I'm not a short term thinker. I'm a long term thinker. I think long term is a lot more important than short term. Um, yes, what's happening in Shanghai. I don't think Shanghai, no, so as far as, but I'll just address Q1 really quick. Um, deliveries were about the same, a little higher, but average selling price should be higher. And it's possible. I think there was a big mega pack delivery. I think there was a big mega pack delivery in Q1, so I think revenue is going to be up significantly. I think profit will be up a bit. It's possible that they are going to take a hit on costs from Giga Berlin, that they have to account for the cost from Giga Berlin because they may have delivered some vehicles. But I think overall, I think we're going to see Q1 be okay. But really, more about long term. Um, probably, you know, the things that stand out to me. Um, Something that people don't talk about enough is the Tesla team. It's not just Elon. Elon's critical, Elon's important, but Elon's biggest strength is building teams. He built a great team at SpaceX. He built a great team at Tesla. He's built a great team at Tesla. And wind noise is harsh. Oh, the wind is a lot better than it was yesterday, so as far as I'm concerned. The um, is my price prediction in 2025 still ten thousand dollars? My bear case for 2030. Is it windy? Can you guys? Are you guys? I'm. I found a spot that's not very windy. I'm surprised that you guys are getting wind. Um, maybe this will be better if I'm away from the fence. So um, weird. Let me see if I. I got an idea. Wait, like I got an idea. Let me see if I could. If I do this. Let's try this. I'm hunkering down next to a pickup truck. Maybe that'll help with the wind. It's very windy out, but you should be able to hear me okay. So, oh, oh there's the wind. wind's picking up. So, um, maybe closer to the ground is good. So the team, I've met, I've met a fair number of Tesla and SpaceX employees now over the last year, and I am really, really impressed with the employees. Um, you know, high-level employees, lower lower-ranked employees, particularly the engineers, particularly the management team, um, a lot of great people. I'm just you know, like I met I, I met some of the top people in the company. I've met like you know you know ground-level engineering staff. I met regular workers. Um, same thing at SpaceX. I don't think I met anybody high-level at SpaceX, but I met some engineers and I met some contractors, and I'm just consistently impressed with the quality of the team. Um, oh, Kairov says, after Giga Osaka, where do you think next? Giga UK, Giga India. Okay, so I don't have any thoughts on after Giga Osaka. I want to mention that I am much more, con I'm not 100%, but I am much more confident we are going to see Giga Osaka or Giga Wakayama. Wakayama is right outside of Osaka. Um, probably next year. That's a, good, that's a hunch, okay? But why would Panasonic be building a 4680 cell factory, which they are doing, in Osaka, Japan, or Wakayama, Japan, the only customer for a 4680 cell is Tesla. So why would you build 4680 cells in Japan if you were going to send them to the United States or Shanghai? You wouldn't. 
you, you, you know, they, they would build 4680 cells in Japan for a factory in Japan. It doesn't make sense to build them that far away. So, but long term, I'm just looking long term and I made a video, if, if, by the way, I wanna mention really quick, t-shirts, Tesla's the next Tesla. I've been wearing my t-shirts at this event and I got a lot of, it. certain t-shirts got a lot of attention. Everyone likes this t-shirt, Tesla's the next Tesla. The Tesla and Air shirt has always been popular. The Cybertruck shirt's popular. This is all at elonbits.com. But what really stood out at this event, if you, are, if you are a man and you want to attract attention from women, I'm not saying the attention will necessarily be good. But if you want to attract attention from women, thank you, Ifeyanyi Ibanu. When do you think we will see stats on Austin Built Model Y? I've been wondering that question for myself. I think the EPA filing um, that was made about the Model Y Standard Range Plus, the Model Y all-wheel drive, I think that is the initial vehicle out of, out of um, Giga Texas. I don't know when we're gonna see 4680 vehicles out of Texas. So the insanely gigantic shirt and the Let's Make Baby shirt get a lot of attention. And I just wanna to present to you, if you're wearing the insanely gigantic shirt or the, and I'm gonna say this, I'm actually gonna do a, a video specifically about the shirts, or you're wearing the Let's Make Baby shirt, and a woman says, oh my God, I can't believe you're wearing that shirt. You say, well, this is about, you know, insanely gigantic is about the value of robo taxis in, in the future in the world and what, what an impact they're gonna have on the world and how much profit they're gonna make. Why, what did you think it meant? Oh, you have a dirty mind? Oh, that's interesting. Or if you wear the Let's Make Baby shirt, you're just talking about the global fertility crisis and how human, humans aren't having enough children and we're gonna, the species is gonna get extinguished. Why, did you think I meant something else? Do you have a dirty mind? That's a good way to start up a conversation. Maybe. Um, I actually, this actually happened to me, by the way. I was in a bar in Austin. I was wearing the insanely gigantic shirt and a woman was like, multiple people had noticed these shirts. Women, women especially, but men also, notice the shirt and they look. They, it gets their attention. Now, some, it might get some negative attention, but it's fun. You see Mike? I don't know, that's uh, well, so Tesla and Air shirt is not just for people who have a million dollars in Tesla stock. Tesla and Air shirt is for people who either become a millionaire because of Tesla stock or for people who hope to become a millionaire thanks to Tesla stock. Um, it's helpful if you have already a million dollars worth of Tesla stock, but it's intended for more than that. So anyway, enough about the t-shirts. Um, what I'm really excited about is so, oh, okay. I, what I'm really excited about is what I'm seeing in terms of the future for Tesla. I just made a video called Elonopoly. The nature of how things work that with Elon's businesses, think about this, this is a SpaceX connection, okay? So Bob says, Europe doesn't need more people. If we, it's not about more people. If, if people don't have enough children, then we, the population goes to zero. I was laughing when you asked a girl you met at Cyber Rodeo to have dinner, totally understand. Uh, thank you. Um, hey, if you don't ask, it can't happen. Shoot your shot, right? So, she's really pretty, by the way. Um, and also really smart and really interesting. I, I really get interested in women who are smart and interesting. And she's really smart and really interesting. So, interested in brain science. That was, a, that was really cool. So, um, Elonopoly, if you look at SpaceX landing an orbital rocket booster and in December of 2015, that was more than six years ago now, SpaceX is dominating the global launch industry because of reusability, lowering their cost of access to orbit, because of all the engineering they've done to, to lower the cost of getting launching payloads to orbit. Six years ago, no one has even tried. So when, not if, when Tesla delivers full self-driving robo-taxis, which is a very, just like orbit, landing orbital rocket boosters was very hard, Delivering a robo a working robo taxi network is going to be very hard. When Tesla delivers a robo taxi network, the competition is not coming. Not right away. If it take if it's taken them more than six years to do to, to not even try for an orbital rocket booster. If, if they not if they haven't even, if they haven't even tried to land an orbital rocket booster yet and reuse an orbital rocket booster yet, how long is it going to take them to? emulate the robo taxi network it's going to take more than five years it may take 10 years because they, they haven't done the orbital rocket booster yet Neuralink how long is it going to take for somebody to emulate Neuralink 
Cybertruck. How long is it somebody somebody going to take for somebody to get that better? Did I, I did not wear the Mathawana shirt. I didn't. That shirt does not sell. It's not really as relevant to Tesla. I did mention Mathawana on stage. Elon said they're making dedicated robo taxi. He's been talking about dedicated robo taxi for a long time. That wasn't new. That was not new. He's talked about that before. There was not. Elon did not say a lot that was new on stage. So I'm really pumped about the prospect of. Test, first mover advantage moon exactly so the second point about this is once Tesla deliver once Tesla or SpaceX delivers an innovation like this Starlink is another great example of this you make a huge investment to become the first mover in something that's really what's what I would say has barriers to entry the econ economics would, would call it barriers to entry if it's really really hard to, to, to achieve this goal and it's really really hard for whoever's in, wants to be in second place to achieve this goal and it's gonna cost them a lot of money and they look at the future and they say, well, okay, we can invest 10 or $50 billion to build out a robo-taxi network. Or we can invest 10 or $50 billion to build a Starlink network, whatever it is. By the time we get there, number one, Elon's companies will be more advanced. And number two, you're gonna have to price yourself lower than them to succeed and they can lower their price because they're gonna be a lower cost provider than you. Yes, exactly, that's how you get a little monopoly. And also, Eric, thank you for joining the channel. So ultimately what happens is, I think I saw Eric when I was in Texas, earlier in Texas. Um, if you succeed in becoming the first mover, the challenge of being second mover is you have to invest more money than the first mover and you make less money. And you get this return on investment problem of is it worth the return on investment? So I was doing this debate, hyper bulls versus bulls, and one of the bulls, Larry Goldberg from Sapiens Decisions, he's a big investor, was saying that you know China will do it. China will spend ten billion dollars that they have to to build robo taxis. Well, where's the Chinese orbital rocket booster that's landing? If if the Chinese are going to make that kind of investment, and they're going to compete. Why haven't they started landing orbital rocket boosters yet? It's not that easy, and it's not necessarily something they're going to do. Is there a video of the debate? Um, it was. I think you'd look for Tesla Con Texas. There is a video, apparently the sound is not good, and it was live streamed, and uh, I believe they are, I mean, I don't believe, I, they told us they were working on, they're, that they're working on an edited version of those videos to fix the sound, because they have better sound than they, they have better sound quality than, than the live stream had. So that should be appearing fairly soon. It was a blast, it was a lot of fun. Um, I would say, I'm gonna brag and say I did a great job on stage. You all know I'm humble, right? <laughs> so what else did I want to say? So, so, you know, the other thing I would just wanna mention is, did you ask any of the people you met over the last few days to do an interview on your channel? Yes, I did. Um, not, not necessarily anybody big, but what's my price model best case by 2030? So I don't, first of all, I don't call it a price model. Uh, my models for Tesla, I, I talk about how much I think Tesla stock is worth. I can't control what Wall Street is going to do in terms of pricing. I don't know the channel yet. Um, I will certainly tweet it and put it on the YouTube channel community page when I find out. And I'll mention it in a video. So, um, brain freeze. Hate when this happens. <laughs> so, my, my, my models are not about what, what Wall Street will price it, but here's what I see. Robotaxi can easily take Tesla to $50,000 a share or higher. And $100,000 a share is not out of the question. And you know, I've, I've done these numbers before. You, I, I, I wanted to talk about napkin math. I, you know, I've driven by napkin math. Elon, Elon built SpaceX on napkin math. He was doing napkin math on an airplane and he figured out that he could build a rocket company that would, that would you know, become successful at least potentially. Napkin math, and he built a rocket company. If you look at the history of SpaceX, he did napkin math while he was flying on a plane. Um, I think I did watch Return to Space. So, Inspiration 4 was more fun. So, um, what Inspiration 4 was a uh, countdown on Netflix. I don't think about stock splits. So, napkin math, really simple napkin math I went over with people. Imagine Tesla has 10 million robo-taxis in its own fleet. Forget about all the other revenue the company has. 10 million robo-taxis, each generating $100,000 a year revenue, $60,000 a year in gross profit, $40,000 in net profit. Times 10 million is $400 billion in net profit 
for Tesla. With a price earnings ratio of 30, just 30, you get one, you get $12 trillion market cap and $112,000 a share. There's no reason Tesla's limited to 10 million robo taxis. Tesla probably has 10 million robo taxis by 2026 or 2027. And we're leaving out selling cars, we're leaving out so many other things. Um, so what if it was 20, 20 million cars? What if it's 50 million cars? What if it's 100 million robo taxis and you cut the, the, the profits in half? So you 5x the, the profits totally because you divide by two and add, divide by two in terms of the price and multiply by 10 in terms of the volume. And you 5x that $12 trillion market cap and you're at $60 trillion and you still haven't done Mega Pack and Powerwall and so the sky's the limit. And then it may be that the price ends up higher. Like really my $100,000 a year in revenue per car is low. My gross profit on the on the vehicle being 60,000 out of 100,000 is low. Net profit's probably about right, two thirds of gross profit. So you can easily get to $100,000 a share if things go well. If things don't go well, and you just go with the battery revenue model, and you say six terawatt hours, or let's say you don't achieve six terawatt hours of batteries, you only achieve two terawatt hours of batteries. And you make $500 a kilowatt hour on the batteries. You get insane revenue numbers and then you convert that into 30% margins and you just get insane profit and you still end up with like an eight trillion dollar market cap and eight thousand dollars a share that's the bear case the bear case for 2030 is eight thousand dollars a share parking lot math exactly this is parking lot math so um, but that doesn't get to bot yes I saw Dave Lee on, on robot I didn't watch the whole video but he, he said something on Twitter about robo taxi and I think Dave Dave when people say that RoboTaxi is going to sell rides at 25 cents a mile or 50 cents a mile, they're missing it. RoboTaxi starts at like a dollar, a dollar fifty a mile. It doesn't start at at it doesn't start low. You you need to have if you if you price RoboTaxi too low and you don't have enough RoboTaxis, then the market then you don't have enough vehicles for the demand. You're too old for 2030. I can't fix that for you. I can't fix that for you. And the other thing I wanted to mention is, and I talked about this at the event, was if we get to a point where there's these moments in time where companies become the dominant company and everyone recognizes it's the dominant company, the dominant player in a market. So General Electric for a while was perceived as the dominant player in its industries. It wasn't just one industry. And Cisco Systems, which did internet hardware, was perceived as the dominant player. And Wall Street overvalued those companies on the theory that the big dog gets a premium. So it's possible that Wall Street at some point will come around and overshoot on the value of the company. How big will the economy be if Tesla goes to a $100 trillion market cap? So um, people confuse market cap with GDP. It's a common mistake. But you have to remember, if Tesla delivers 100 million robo-taxis driving people around at, say, 50 cents a mile, then this, the, of course I might be wrong. We're always wrong and we're trying to be less wrong. The, one of the things that happens is that they deliver transportation at 50 cents a mile. Then we've made the simul, we've made the economy more efficient. When do you think we see a bot prototype demo? Bot prototype probably next year. But late next year, maybe 2024, but the prototype won't be that exciting. Yeah, Dave Lee calculated a million robo taxis. How many vehicles at that? Once they start making robo taxis, every vehicle they make is going to be a robo taxi. Why would you sell for a vehicle for anything else? Once it can, it's it's five to ten times more valuable as a robo taxi as it is anything else. So everything they make becomes a robo taxi. They're going to make two million, close to two million vehicles this year. Maybe four or five million vehicles next year. By the time we get to 2026, they're making 10 million, 10 million vehicles a year or more. They're all going the robo taxi network. It's crazy. So do I think Elon will be a grandstanding historical figure where our great-grandchildren learn about him in history class? Yes. Yes, we learned about Ben Franklin. We learned, we learned about Ben Franklin. So what do I think? When do I think? We have to go? Ready. Ready? All right. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to wrap up the live stream early. This is Rafael Teslatino. Check out the Teslatino channel on YouTube. Check him out on Twitter, Teslatino. He is my ride home to Florida. We're having a great time on our travels across the country. Great food. Great adventure. We had a great breakfast this morning in Brownsville. Remember the name of the place? Emilia's? Emilia's. Emilia's in Brownsville. Great breakfast. Great Airbnb. I forget the name of it, unfortunately. 
um, why I'm on the floor. I'm on the floor to reduce wind noise. So I'm afraid we got to go. So thanks everybody for watching. Check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com. Insanely gigantic. Let's make babies. Let's have fun. Thanks everybody.